Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock. We've got all the latest news from you in the world of mixed martial arts. There may be a fight scheduled for Nate Diaz, but we're not 100% sure on the opponent. We have a heavyweight main event for July, and two former female title challenges could be pitted against one another down the road. It was reported by Ariel Hawani on UFC Tonight this week that Nate Diaz is returning to the welterweight division and is going to fight Matt Brown on the already stacked UFC 189 card on July the 11th in Las Vegas. Nate Diaz has since commented and said the fight is not official and he wants to fight Anthony Pettis but is scheduled to meet with the UFC on Monday. Diaz fought at 170 pounds in 2010 and 2011 before losses to Dong Yun Kim and Roy McDonald led to him returning to the lightweight division. Diaz last fought in December of last year where he was soundly defeated by Rafael Dos Anjos while Brown is coming off a decision loss to Johnny Hendricks at UFC 185 last month in Dallas. It was also reported by Ariel Hawani that a heavyweight bout between Frank Mir and Todd Duffy will headline the UFC's July 15th card in San Diego, California, which takes place just four days after UFC 189. The former heavyweight champion Mir ended a four-fight losing stretch after defeating Antonio Silva back in February, and Duffy last fought in December of last year where he stopped Anthony Hamilton in 33 seconds at UFC 181. It was Duffy who had been very vocal in trying to land the fight with Mir and will now get his opportunity to fight him. And a final report from UFC Tonight is that Sarah McMahon is seeking a fight with Kat Zingano in her next outing. McMahon last fought in January where she dropped the decision to Misha Tate, while Zingano challenged Ronda Rousey in February and was submitted in 14 seconds at UFC 184. This coming Saturday, we have a one-hour preview show kicking off at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Myself and Robin Black will be counting down to the main card from Poland, which airs here on Fight Network at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, featuring Gabriel Gonzaga and Mirko Krokop in the heavyweight main event. I am here with Robin Black, and when you hear Nate Diaz and Matt Brown being used in the same sentence, much less the possibility of the same fight, I mean, what comes to mind for you, Robin? Those guys getting high together comes to mind. I imagine those two guys are sitting around passing, mar no, I'm fighting. I want to see these guys fight each other. And uh, man, that does sound fun. It's, you start to picture how it's going to look, and I don't think you can uh, intimidate Matt Brown. I don't think you can mess with him. I don't think you can play with his mind. I think you just got to get in there and fight him if you're Nate Diaz. It also means if you're Nate Diaz, you've got to bring your best game. You know, you've got to bring your top game. And uh, he hasn't always been doing that over the last couple of years. Distractions, whatever things, you know, are, are kind of getting inside of his head, whatever things there are with his contract. But when Nate Diaz is, is focused and Nate Diaz wants a fight, and uh, Matt Brown's the other guy, you got a good fight. Now this fight was announced and then Nate Diaz has come out saying it's not official yet and he was saying he wants to fight Anthony Pettis, which would mean staying at lightweight. I mean, what kind of, both are very intriguing fights on paper. I think we've seen Nate Diaz go to 170 pounds in the past. I think lightweight is the right division yeah. for him. I don't think it's the size that has been the problem for Nate. I agree. I'd like to see him fight Matt Brown. That would be a lot of fun, but I think he is a better 155er. I think that fight with Rory, he handled it like a champ because that's what Diaz brothers do, but he was in there with a young, powerful, rugged animal that could physically lift, literally lift him up and throw him through the air. And I think that experience is like, yeah, these guys are, are too big to jump around in here with. Lightweight is a better uh, uh, division for him. Also, the Pettis fight is a hard fight, but so is Matt Brown, and uh, you're, the payoff is higher. Pe um, you know, Diaz believes that he should be fighting at the top, and I think we agree with him. If you beat Pettis, all of a sudden, you know, if you've had wins and losses for a while, it's tough to say, hey, I want the champ, but if you beat Pettis, it's a lot easier. I, I think that the next fight for Nate Diaz is going to be very telling because he was just outclassed by Rafael Dos Anjos. And that's the kind of performance where you either go back and you say, man, I'm j I just don't have what I used to have, or you completely reinvent yourself and look at that performance and come back a completely different fighter. I think that's going to be the telling tale with, with Nate Diaz because he was unable to change on the fly. His leg was getting decimated throughout those 15 minutes. It's not a pretty fight for him. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting thought to picture Nick and Nate Diaz becoming a different fighter. But it might be time, you know, they built this phenomenal game that was built around their attributes of toughness, desire, and just, you know, ruggedness. And uh, it worked. Sap Alvarez candidates. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sap Alvarez candidates to a T. And it worked. 
but there comes a time where people do figure out what weapons you bring to the party and they figure out what strategies you bring and there are weaknesses in any collection of tools and the ones that exist in that collection, in the Diaz collection, people have started to zero in on. So can they go in, when you build a game around your mental toughness and, and just being a better man than another guy, can you go and rebuild if you're those guys? That's a really good question. It's hard. I don't know the answer to that yet. A fight that is official is Frank Mir and Todd Duffy. And if you're Frank Mir, I mean, he came back, was able to defeat Antonio Silva, kind of got that monkey off his back by ending that four-fight losing streak. Uh, but then, you know, there's all the talk of Brock Lesnar, and with that comes those, those memories of the, probably the paycheck he got after UFC yeah. 100. Uh, instead, he is now getting Todd Duffy, the, he the main event uh, of a free card on television. I think it's no slight to Todd Duffy, but I think for Frank Mir, he was dreaming big, and he's fighting Todd Duffy, who's a tough heavyweight, but certainly nowhere near the name value, I think, that, that Frank Mir was really hoping for in his follow-up fight after Antonio Silva. Yeah, but I, I think when you look at it, you're like, oh, cool, I want some of that Brock Lesnar money. All right, that money is now not available at all. So we have to start our, our plan our plan of our last few years of our career, fresh. Remove the Brock Lesnar from it, where do we start? Okay, can I fight for the title again? I think Frank believes he can, and he, he really is a, a reinvigorated fighter. He's moving so much better, and with, when he moves well, his confidence is high. I still think he can do that. So what's that path entail? Two huge victories and then fight for the title. Todd Duffy is as good, a, a good an opponent as any for that, I think. I think he believes by looking at Todd Duffy that there are some clear weaknesses. Every heavyweight is tough. Duffy hits hard, but if you can get him to the mat, I think Frank can outclass him there. So I think he looks at it it's like, I need two wins. This guy's as good as anybody. And finally, uh, Sarah McMahon, uh, through her manager, Monty Cox, is looking towards Katz and Gano. It is a tough fight for, for both women, uh, but one that you think makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, I like this fight. It's a logical fight. You look, and uh, Sarah McMahon, I think, is the second best woman at 135 pounds. I really do. We haven't seen her at her full potential, but when she can get into that guard and go to work or uh, really build it around her wrestling, her athleticism, I truly think she can be the second best woman in the world, and so this is the fight you want. Is that the title now that we're going for? Second best woman in the world. That's all that's available right now. You ain't going to be the best woman in the world today. All right. He is Robin Black. Don't miss our preview show this Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern time, as we get set for Miracle Crow Cup, Gabriel Gonzaga happening here on Fight Network. But up next is more of Fight News Now Extra.